Well, we get to start the book of Joshua today, and it's an exciting time. But let me get you on the timeline. The Old Testament starts out, depending on how you date Genesis, either 10,000 or 4,000 years before Christ. And uh, it takes us all the way down to 1,400 years before Christ. Uh, that's a lot of years. Uh, at the very least, 3,600 years. 3,600 years. That takes us through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, uh, called the Pentateuch, the uh, first five books of the Bible, or the primeval period of time in the Bible. Today, as we start Joshua, uh, we go through Joshua through Esther. These are historical books. They take us from 1,400 years before Christ down to 473 years before Christ, or approximately 1,000 years. So as compared to the 3,600 or 3,600 years that we have covered in the first of the uh, books of the Bible, we now are going to only cover a time period of less than 1,000 years. More than that, as we start the book of Joshua, one of the 12 books of the historical books, we're going to be covering a time of only 15 years. Now, Joshua was no spring chicken. Remember, Joshua goes all the way back to the early days of Moses when he was a young military man in Moses' army. And uh, he's still alive and still kicking. And he's kicking pretty high because he's going to do three military campaigns and face more than 30 enemy armies during this 15-year period of Joshua's life. But the lesson's not about a military victory. Although it is spectacular, and as though we'll see very quickly uh, as we go into this book of Joshua, uh, the, the true, true story is a spiritual story, a spiritual story of trust and obedience to God. And that's exactly what Joshua did. So as we look at today's particular study, I want us to focus in uh, particularly verses 1 through 8. Uh, of the book of Joshua chapter 1 where we find that God has told Joshua to enter into the land to cross over the Jordan uh, we see this very clearly in verse 3 and uh, as he talks to Joshua he sets down some guidelines for Joshua's victory not just military but spiritual victory he says in verse 5 he says no man will be able to stand before you for just as I was with Moses I will be with you and will not fail you or forsake you now I think that the one thing that I want to point out that God sets out for Joshua that he sets out for all of us is clearly stated in verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. So if you take the Bible, instead of just the book of the law that Moses had, had given and that Joshua was now to follow, but if you would follow the Bible, God says to us, uh, don't let it depart from your mouth. Always be talking about it. Meditate on it day and night and be careful to do all that's according, written and according to it. And then you will have a prosperous way and you'll have fine, fine success. And I believe that's true today. I believe that if we'll take the Bible and we'll study it and we'll meditate on it day and night and we'll be careful to do all that's in it, uh, then I think we'll find the success of life. Uh, now, prosperity may not be measured in dollars and cents, but I think you'll find prosperity and the fact that you'll have all of your needs met and many of your wants met. There's one other phrase that I want to leave you with today. I think it's the most important phrase uh, that God gave to Joshua, and he gave it to him four times in the first chapter. Let me say that again. This phrase is found four times, 
and the first chapter of Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. But today I would say to you, take the Bible, study it, meditate on it day and night. Be careful to obey what God's commanded us to obey and be strong and courageous. My thought for the day, God bless you. Well, how can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. By unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin, said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.